say amen. 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 Genesis 2, verse 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead, finish. I will make him a helper comparable to him. I want to talk about the parable of the fall of man. The parable. You know, I was sharing with a pastor uh, concerning how pastors normally will quote this verse as well as interpret this verse. And I told him, well, I used to think that way as well. And, but I have the advantage over most people that I go back and forth to heaven. And if you ever heard me talk about the library in heaven, you know that the books, when you open them, you go into the story. And so I would like to take you into the story of the fall of man so that you can understand what really happened as opposed of to what's on the surface. But Matthew 13, verse 11. He answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. Also Luke chapter 8, verse 10. So when Jesus came, because Jesus came from heaven, he knew the stories inside of the story. So he spoke in parables. But he told them, I'm going to give you the keys to the mystery of the kingdom of God. Go ahead and read. And he said, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to the rest, it is given in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. So when people read the story of Adam and Eve, they see, but they cannot see. They hear, but they cannot hear. Why? Why? Because the story of Adam and Eve is really no more than a parable. And what is a parable? The definition of a parable is a simple story to illustrate a moral or a spiritual lesson. And so God used living characters to tell the stories for you and I. And so look, look in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 11. So even back Everything that happened with the Hebrews going into Egypt, going into slavery, coming out of slavery, it's a parable. It's a story. And it's there to illustrate a moral or a spiritual lesson for us in the end times. Go ahead and read. Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. So all of the things of the Old Testament is only there for an example. For you and I. And so in Psalms 102, verse 18, concerning Christ the seed, and, and, and I'm going to try to hook this together, but I want to get this verse out right now. This will be written for the generation to come. Because a lot of the stuff that was written was written for the generations to come. But not just any generation, because a generation was, was in the Bible is considered 40 years. But God sent a seed, being Christ, not seeds as a plural, but a seed in one continue. That a people yet to be created may a praise. A people yet to be created. And so we are being created in these last days to show forth the praises and the glory of God. Continue. May praise the Lord. For he looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From heaven, the Lord viewed the earth. And so the Lord knew that he had something for us, and he needed a living example, a living parable, a living story. So he starts with creation, and then he starts with the creation of man. Romans 15, verse 4. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning. So everything that was written before was written for our learning. Go ahead. That we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So that we may have hope 
of all the things that have happened to Adam and Eve, happened to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and David and, 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 and the kingdom of, of Israel. All of the things that happened, that happened to the Hebrews and slavery, everything that happened, happened for us to understand who we are and who Christ is. And 1 Peter 1, verse 12. To them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us, they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. So I am one of those rare people. I, I see inside stories. Mm -hmm. That's why God took me to heaven to show me and took me and let me go into the library so he could take me into the book of Genesis. He could take me into the book of Exodus. And so I tell the story different from the most of the people that you hear. But I tell the story from the scriptures. But people read the scriptures. They have eyes, but they can't see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. Because they don't know the story is inside the story. Not the story that they read. And so, and, and, and so I want to try to, this morning... I want to try to help you understand the parable of Adam and Eve or Christ and his bride. Genesis 3, verse 2 and verse, through verse 4. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For and so in this parable, Adam represents Christ. Eve represents us, those of us that are going on to be the bride, those of us that came out his side, because Eve came out of the side of, of, of Christ. We come out of, of his bosom as well. That's why he was pierced. That's why he was bruised. That's why he was wounded. So out of him came the blood of life and the water of life. So that from that water and from that blood, God will fashion the bride of Christ. You got me? So Hebrews 2, verse 9. And so but, I'm trying, I'm going to take these verses of, that we're reading in Genesis about Adam and Eve and the garden and the tree of knowledge and good and evil <clears throat> and the tree of life, and I'm going to tell you the story that I was shown and not the story that I was told. <laughs> so I was in a church where they told the story, but God took me to heaven so I could feel the story. I could see the story. I could understand the story, and I can come back and reveal to you the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. Because in this story of Genesis 3, verses 2 to 4 that I had you read, it's about touching a tree where you die. But un unbeknown to Adam and Eve, someone had already tasted of that tree. Because in this same chapter at the end, the Lord said, Behold, the man has become as one of us who have eaten of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's why I had you read in Hebrews 2, 9, that Jesus, by the grace of God, has tasted death for everyone. And so when God told Adam and Eve that the day that they eat of the tree of knowledge and good and evil, they will surely die. They did not die because he died before. Oh, Jesus. So when you look at why did Adam and Eve not die, it's because he already tasted the tree of, of, of the knowledge of good and evil that he may, test, he may taste death beforehand. So the, so. Their life was extended by mercy and by grace because Hebrews 2 says, yes, by God's grace. And that's why God's grace is given to us, but the law came through Moses. And so God has said, for those that I give grace to, I have already tasted death. But it's only for people of grace. 
Are y'all with me? Yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for everyone. That means that when Adam and Eve tasted death, he had already tasted death beforehand. So Jesus said, and let's go to that. Let's go to Genesis 3 where we can see where he tasted death beforehand. I want to give you the scripture so that everybody, verses, verses 22. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So God did not want man to touch Jesus just yet. Because unbeknown to you, Jesus is the tree of life. And so they didn't want him to touch him. That's why he told Mary when she came out of the grave, touch me not. Why? I have not ascended. Because unless a corn we fall in the ground and die and abide it for long. And so Jesus had yet to come in what he clothed man with. Look in the verse before, verse 20 and 21. <laughs> And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. But she was the mother of all the living dead, because everything in her died the day that she tasted death. Her egg now would not be eternal. Adam's sperm now would not be eternal. Hence, everybody created from them would die, because the day they ate of it, they would surely die. But they didn't die immediately because God had already tasted death. So what did God do? Look what he did in the next verse. Remember, it's a parable. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. He made them. skin. And so God wrapped them in death. So hence, Jesus had to come in the likeness of sinful flesh, which was death itself. So God wrapped them in death. That's why he said, the day that you eat of the tree, you will surely die. So he put death on them. Hence, all men die because the weakness of the flesh. And so the Lord God, what did he do? He wrapped them in skin. Hence, O oh wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from the body of death? See how they go. and so that day God clothed them in death. So all of us walk in death. Jesus. And so God wrapped us in death, and then it says, Then the Lord God said, He cannot touch me in that skin. And but he can touch me in the one that I will create and put anyone in him. So in Adam, the first Adam, all died. Let's look, that, look at that in 1 Corinthians 15. So we have the story of Adam in the story of Adam. 1 Corinthians 15 verses I know I'm going fast because I have a lot to cover because <laughs> verses 22 for as in Adam all die. So in that Adam all die because God wrapped him in death called skin. And so now he became flesh. Because God at first placed him in the garden of the spirits, just his spirit. And there in the garden of the spirits, man walked in the spirit. And he heard Jesus walking in the Holy Ghost, in the, 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 the cool of the day. But that word cool or there is the breath of God. Jesus walked in the breath of God. And man lived in the breath of God. And so God was going to wrap him in flesh only if he fell. Because flesh is death. So go ahead, continue to read. Even so, in Christ, all shall be made alive. But in Christ, in his flesh... All shall be made alive because unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you do not have from the tree of life. Because you got, we got clothed from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We got clothed with death. Hence, you are walking dead. Say what? But, but continue. But each one in his own order. Christ. So 
so, so everybody, so it tells us verses, go ahead, continue. Each one in his own order, Christ the first fruits. And so uh, he's talking about dying there. And that's the corner we fall on the ground and die is about to know. So Jesus took with the likeness of sinful flesh. He put on death. So why? So he could take it to the grave and come up with a new flesh. <laughs> so that anybody then that would be in him will walk in life. And no longer walk in death. Continue to read. Afterward, those who are Christ's at his coming. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. So he wants to do away with what happened in the garden. The garden story is no more than a parable. Jesus is coming now to deal with the serpent. He came to deal with the serpent. Then God said it was not good for him to be alone, so he made his bride. Wow. <laughs> and so continue. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. And so he come to crucify our flesh. For the last enemy to be put to death is you. Not the devil. The devil is not the last enemy. The last enemy is you. And so I must crucify my own flesh. Continue. For he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. So you must put yourself under your own feet. Your battle is with the devil, but it's also with yourself. Why? Because he clothed us in death. Continue. Now when all things are made subject to him, then the son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under because him. Because he also tasted of the tree, he himself also must be subjected to him who says, do not touch it. See, he ate of the same tree. Behold, the man is like one of us. <laughs> and therefore, he himself had to come in the likeness of sinful flesh because God wrapped him in flesh. He woke up one day and he was no longer in heaven the same way Adam did. He woke up in flesh. Jesus. Continue. That God may be all in all. That God may be all in all. Now... I'll, I'll, I'll hold your hand here just for a second. Go to the Philippians 2 because I want to connect what I'm about to come back to in Corinthians with Philippians 2, verses 6, uh, verse 5. And let this mind be in you. Which so was let this mind be in you. Yeah. What mind? Go ahead. Which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God. Did and so Adam was made in the likeness of God. But guess what? He didn't have this mind. What mind did he not have? Continue. Did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And so Adam in the garden thought more of himself because he was equal with God. And therefore, because he was a spirit, a soul, and a body. But God kept back the skin so he, before he saw how he would walk in the spirit. So Romans 8, 14, don't turn there. As many of us which are led by the spirit, we are the children of God. Not just being born again. It's being saved and then walking out your salvation in fear and with trembling. Continue. And being found in appearance as a man. So he awakened one day and he was no longer... The word, the word had become flesh. And then the word that had become flesh, that which was spirit, was now sin and death. So what happened? He humbled himself. He humbled himself. He woke up and he said, oh, my God. He was no longer in heaven because someone had put him in the garden. All the garden is is dirt. It's a parable. 
God now had placed Jesus also in the garden, the garden of himself. Continue. And became obedient to the point of death. Now he had to be obedient while he was in the garden. He had to keep it, dress it, and present it back to God without spat, without wrinkle, without blemish, even though he was walking in the likeness of sinful flesh. Continue. Even the yeah, death. to do it, yes. Even the death of the cross. Even the death of the cross. The cross was he himself. Your cross is not a piece of wood. Your cross is you. So he said, pick up your cross, that's your body, and follow me. Follow me in your flesh doing the will of God. Continue. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him. So God highly exalted him. Why? Because when he saw that he came in the likeness of sinful man, he humbled himself and said, I still will serve you even though I'm, I'm a walking dead. I'm walking in sin. I'm walking the nature of sin, not the act of sin, because he knew that if he was obedient, even though he was born a sinner, that the, that obedience would be counted as righteousness. It would be his victory. Continue. And given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Because Jesus was the first to come in the spirit and then be placed in death and walk in victory doing the perfect will of God. Yes. Then back to Corinthians 15. So, so, verses 28. Now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Otherwise, what will they do who are baptized from the dead? So people were being baptized for the dead. Jesus had already been baptized for the dead, even though the dead had not died. So he tasted death before Adam and Eve tasted death, so that in the day that they ate of it, they didn't die with their physical body. They didn't die in the spirit. They didn't die in their soul. So people always preach they died that day. No, Christ died that day. Because the minute they ate of it, then he had to come in their likeness. And so he died that day for us. And it pleased the father to bruise him. That he may make him the lamb of God that would take away the sin of the world. He became the replacement for Adam. So Adam did not die. Why? Because that was Christ's day. And he rejoiced to see it. God delighted in the fall of man so that Jesus could come and save himself from eating the tree. So it says, so, so, so it says right here, verse 47. The first man was of earth. So the first man was of the earth. That's the parable. Continue. Made of dust. He was made of dust. And God put him in that body. That's why when he breathed into man, I breathed into man, he breathed a soul into man. But that soul was breathed into his spirit, not into his body. So your soul and spirit is consummated together. And then when man fell, he put him in the body. Because man was in the body, but God took him out one day and placed him in the body of Christ called the garden. <laughs> Continue. I ain't done yet. The second man is the Lord from heaven. The second Adam, or the last Adam, is the Lord from heaven. Continue. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. So, all of the people that are born in the dust or the dirt or, or, or death or the grave, 
Because when you place somebody, you place them in the ground. You place them in the ground because uh, that's what you are. Your body is from the ground. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and earth to earth. Continue. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. So God needed to bring the dirt from heaven because that body is eternal. So God did not want to place man in an eternal body first because he wanted to see if man could do his will as he was. And so he says, unless man touch the eternal body and get in that in a sinful state where they never do my will, they just are, they, they eternal disobedient, just doing it and raping and killing and murdering nonstop because they would be eternal once they touched the tree of life and ate. Continue. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh cannot, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So we cannot go back to the garden up there unless we can prove we can do his will with the garden we walk in. You have to prove to God you can do his will in sinful flesh. Wow. In this body of death, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave his body for me. And so John 6, 53 to 54, there's so much. And I mean, all of the stuff I'm getting in not in my six pages of notes. So I'm just, I just digress from my message. So I'm going back to my message. Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink of his blood, you have no life in you. And so we must go to history and we must pull from the fruit on history. And we must eat from him. Continue. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Because once we eat that, we now have eternal life. And go ahead. And I will raise him up at the last day. And I will raise him up at the last. Look at John, while we're in the same chapter, verse, 20, 20, uh, verse 27. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life which the son of man will give you and go ahead because God, the father has set his seal on him. Then so we, 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 we think the garden was about natural food. And so that, that's how we see things. We see it, everything from the natural food. Uh, go ahead. Continue to read. Then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. And so the work of God is believing on the one he sent. And so Jesus tells us, chap, uh, same chapter, verse 51, who was he? I am the living bread. Which, I am the living bread. Go ahead. Which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. Remember, they had manna, but that was a parable. Everything there is a parable. He said, I am the living bread. Yeah. If anyone, go ahead. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh. My flesh is the bread. My flesh is the bread. Y'all missing it. My flesh is the bread. Unless you eat my flesh. Because they were eating flesh from trees. They were eating from the life of the trees of the Garden of Eden. And so, unbeknown to most people, they keep thinking of trees. But you ain't been in the story. <laughs> Prophets been in the story. Look in the book of Ezekiel chapter 31. Ezekiel 31, let's start with verse, um, uh, verse, verse 3. 
Indeed, Assyria was a cedar in Lebanon, with fine branches that shaded the forest and of high stature. Look in verses 8 and 9. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide it. And so he's talking about a nation. But he, then he's talking about an entity. He's taking the prophet here is going to take you in the story that God put him in so that he can tell you what really Genesis 2 and 3 was like. So God is telling the prophet Ezekiel, tell him what really was the Garden of Eden. Continue. The fir trees were not like its boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like its branches. No tree in the garden of God was like it in beauty. I made it beautiful with a multitude of branches, so that all the trees of Eden envied it. And so all the trees of Eden was entities. So the tree of knowledge of good and evil, it's not a tree with limbs and leaves like you think. It's a person walking. The tree of life is a person walking. All of the trees in the garden was good for fruit, good for food, for your spirit. It's not a natural garden. Continue. That were in the garden of God. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have increased in height. And so because of the pride of the different entities in the garden, one by one, God began to chase them out of the garden. Look in verse 16. I made the nations shake at the sound of its fall. So when Assyria, the, the angel that was over Babylon, this is the angel that came out of the Garden of Eden. And finally, God said, I, you fell from heaven you, to the earth. Then you, you, you went out and you conquered all the nations around. Assyria conquered all. Uh, Assyria ruled the world in those days. But it was ruled by an entity that walked in the Garden of God. And so one by one, the trees have been falling since man fell. One by one, trees are falling. And you don't know that they still falling, but the prophets do. Don't take my word for it. Continue. When I cast it down to hell together with those who descend into the pit. So there were already other trees and nations that had fell for Assyria. And continue. And all the trees of Eden. The All the other trees in Eden that had already fallen. So Assyria fell also and went to the grave with the other trees. Continue. The choice and best of Lebanon. All that drink water were comforted in the depths of the earth. They were comforted and say, you finally fell too. Because she was the most powerful of all the trees in the trees of God. She was the wisdom, the knowledge. She knew how to the warfare, everything she could do. So she gave that to a natural man, and they conquered the world. Mm. You can only conquer the world from an entity. Mm. Verse 18. To which of the trees in Eden will you then be likened in so glory? So which of the trees in Eden are you likened to? So I'd like to take you into the story. So which of the trees? Go ahead. In glory and greatness, yet you shall be brought down with the trees of Eden to the depths of the You'll earth. You'll be brought down with all the other trees. But there's trees yet to fall that are going to fall from the garden of God. For the garden of God is above. That's where he placed man. Continue. You shall lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with those slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, says the Lord God. So the Lord said, y'all not in the story. You read Adam and Eve, you're not in the story. And so Jesus comes, and, 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 and while we're here, let me, what about the stones that was in the garden? Ezekiel 28, 13. Remember that Ezekiel is one that is a specialist in the garden of God. He knew about the stones. He knew about the trees. He's a prophet. Remember, he's taken up into heaven just like I was. <laughs> you know, Ezekiel. And then he comes back and he tells the story of the Garden of Eden different from everyone. You were in Eden, the Garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. So remember then, there's four gardens that are outside the Garden of Eden. So there were five gardens of Eden. 
the garden of the stones, and this guy was over the garden of the stones, the garden of the trees. Assyria was over the garden of the trees. This cherubim that walk among the fire and the stones of God, he's over the garden of the stones. So you see the garden of the animals, the garden of the stones. And, then, and so you got these four gardens, but out they all came out of Eden. And it doesn't tell you what's in the real Eden. I believe that's the garden of the gods. And everything they, that represented the garden of the gods, they created outside of themselves. So everything that will fall will fall out of them and not be in them. That's why Jesus must subdue all things, and then he himself will bow the knee and be subject. He had to come on the outside and suffer and not on the inside. He was in the bosom of the Father. He had to come out to die. He, he could not die inside of him. Woo! Moving right along. Back, back to my message now. I digress. And so, Jesus had to taste death for us. John 8, 51. Most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. So Jesus never wanted Adam and Eve to see death. Did you hear me? This is so important to understand what I'm about to tell you. you talk, you're talking about a deep revelation. I want you to hear me. So God had to prepare a place to bury Adam and Eve into. Did you hear me? So he had to prepare someone to put Adam and Eve in when they naturally died. He did not want them into death. Because it, he had to taste death, not man. So he had to taste death so Adam and Eve was not put into death. Because when you put into death, you can never live. So he says, if you believe in me, I will make sure you never taste death. But it's appointed to man wants to die. Because man always think his flesh is him. So they say, he died. <laughs> so he says, Lazarus is asleep. Continue. Then the Jews said to him, now we know that you have a demon. Abraham is dead and the prophets, and you say, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never taste death. And so he says, they shall never taste death. So watch when he says, men will taste death. Mark 9, verse 1. So many people were standing there. And watch what he says. It, you know, this is one of the verses that confound people. I have never heard anyone give the revelation that I'm about to give you. And he said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that there are some standing here who will not taste death till they see the kingdom of God present with power. See, they will never, they will die, but they will never taste death till they see him come in the kingdom of God. And he said, I was hungry and you did not feed me. Then he puts them into death. It's called the second death. And because there's two death, you don't know what death is. You don't know which one the verses are talking about. Mm -hmm. And so the day that you eat of that tree of knowledge and good and evil, you will surely die. Mm -hmm. He did not die mm -hmm. because of what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. John 1, 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. What did John see? And so when Adam and Eve fell, 
guess what they saw? Walking in the cool of the day. The Lamb of God. Oh, I want to. And he said, where are you? Jesus. He wanted to clothe them that day with himself. But because there was no repentance, he clothed them in death. But flesh is temporary death. It's not eternal. So he said, do not be afraid of him that can destroy the body. Rather be afraid of him who can destroy both body and soul in hell, not in death. I ain't done. John 12, 32. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. So Jesus told this in the story of Genesis he says, what did he tell man not to do with the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Who can tell me? Raise your hand if you can tell me what the Lord told him not to do. Not to eat of it. How many say not to eat of it? Not to touch it. He told them both. Yes. Neither eat nor touch. You know you can touch something without touching it but with your eyes. Do you know you can look on a woman and never touch her and commit adultery? But you committed it. Do you know you can hate your brother and never put a knife in him yes. and yet you murdered him? Yes. So when the Lord says don't touch it, mm -hmm. Jesus is saying that to his bride. Yes. He's saying don't touch this. Don't eat this. Don't, don't. He all of the things he tells you not to touch and eat is spiritual. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with adultery in the body. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the adultery of the heart. With your spirit. And so, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 15. And he died for all. So, so was Adam one of the ones, and Eve one of the ones he died for? So, who did he die for? It tells you. He died what? For all. Go ahead. That those who live should live no longer for themselves but for him who died for them and rose again. And so he died for them all, but Adam and Eve, what happened to all of the people that he died for, but never got really to see the lamb? First Peter. First Peter 4, verse 5. And so unbeknown to people to read the Genesis story, he put Adam and Eve in a different place. Because he knew he was coming back for them. They will give an account to him who is ready to what judge. What did I say? First Peter 4, verse 6? Verse 5. One, six. Verse 6. Okay. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead. And so hence, when Jesus finally died, he went to the place where all of the places that he had people reserved. The bosom of Abraham. All of these places that he had placed people from their dispensations because you're located in your dispensational place. Mm -hmm. And so he, where Adam, all the way from Adam to Noah, they had a place reserved for them. Remember there in chapter 3 where it went to preach to the spirits that were disobedient? Let's look at that. Yeah. First Peter 3, verse 19. By whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. So they had a prison where he reserved them for. He didn't want them in death. He put them in their own location. So then he went to preach from Adam to Noah. Everyone that was what? Disobedient. Because they could not sin in those days because there was no law. All they could do would be disobedient. So he went to preach to, watch what it says. By whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison who formerly. Notice there were spirits in prison. So why? They no longer had the sin on them. The body was gone. So, but they were all waiting for a new body, even though they were in prison. They were in prison in God. Continue. Who formerly were disobedient. They were formerly, when? When were they disobedient? Continue. When once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared. And so from Adam. 
them to know, God says, look at here. He had never put judgment where he destroyed the earth with such a thing. He did judge Adam in this sense. He clothed him in sinful flesh. But then when he finally died in the flesh, he put him in a prison. Why? Because the person, the Lamb of God, it will come even there and get you out. And so hence, everybody from Adam to Noah, he went and preached to those that were disobedient while the ark was being prepared. Because God prepared a different ark than the ark. So in one Adam, all die. In the other Adam, all should be made alive. So the prophet says he went and set the prisoners free. He, he set captivity free. People that were captive, people that were prisoners. He went to the various locations and said, Behold the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the whole world. Continue. While the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight souls, were saved through water. Go ahead. There was also an antitype, which now saves That's us. That just was an antitype. Again, another parable. And so back to chapter 4, verse 6. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead. And so for this reason, Jesus had to, that he could be the God of the living and the dead. So he knew man was going to die. So he could be God of the dead. See, for this reason, the gospel would preach even those who are now dead, so that he may judge men as men, what? In the flesh, but live or to, according to God in the spirit. Woo, doggy. So, Romans 5, verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Verse 18. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men. The righteous act was dying in the flesh, doing his will, and not the will of the sin factory. Verse 32, Which chapter 8, chapter? I'm sorry, Romans 8, 32, I'm sorry. So God he, did this. He refused to spare his son. Go ahead. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. For us all, Adam and Eve, for us all, all the way to Adam in the garden. Why did he deliver Adam? Because he, he created him to be the parable. Why did he deliver the Hebrews? He prepared them to be the parable. So everybody that played the role in his parable, he said, I'll come back and save you. I need you to fall because I need you. <laughs> I, 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 don't worry about slavery. i get you out of that. I'll come out with a struggle. And you want to come out empty. You, are, you, you have no idea how many people died for us in the parable. Revelations 2, verse 7. And so the Lord said this. You didn't know he said this back then, but he said it. Revelation 2, verse 7. He who has an ear, let he him said, hear. He said, if you got an ear to hear, touch your ear. And then touch the one inside. Ah. <laughs> See, everybody touched the ear that they thought they could hear. Heaven ears, they hear not. Heaven eyes, they see that. But you can touch your ear, but can you touch the one inside? Has it been pierced to the voice of God? So those that have an ear, he ain't talking about this. He's talking about those people that can hear in their heart and feel the word of God. What would he do? Go ahead. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. What is he saying to you today? 
I'm going to tell you what he's saying to you today. Go ahead. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life. If you can overcome your own self, your own flesh, I let you eat from another flesh. I am the bread of life. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in yourself. If you crucify yourself, I will let you eat of my flesh. From the what? Go ahead. Which is in the midst of the paradise of from God. From the midst of the paradise of God. So God sent the tree from the garden and wrapped it in sinful flesh. And so that anybody that will hear the voice from the tree of life looking at death. Out of death came life. So, 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 so Samson had a parable. And, and he presented his parable to these 200 and some Philistines. He said, if you can figure out my riddle, I give you all fur coats from fox. I buy, I give all of y'all a fox fur coat, he told them. <laughs> and they couldn't figure it out, so they went to his wife and they threatened. But remember, it's a parable. And so his wife asked the, for the answer because they was going to kill her and her parents. And he gave her a, not an answer for her and them, but an answer for those of us that understand the, a parable inside of a parable. And so he says, what is, the answer was what is stronger than the lion and what is sweeter than honey? But both of those are questions. So it was a parable inside of a parable. What is stronger than the lion and sweeter than honey? The love of God. So they never solved the riddle. There's nothing stronger than the love of God and doing the will of God. And nothing sweeter. And so the tree of life, he says to me, come and eat of me. And so you know there's a verse, um, um, it's, it's John chapter 4. Uh, I, I find it real quick. John chapter 4, I believe, is the chapter where Jesus is at with the well with the woman. Yeah. And, and, and um, John, how much time, David? Five minutes, okay. And so, uh, uh, verses, um, uh, do, 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 do. no, I, I want verses, um, verse, starting with verse 27. And John at this, 4, 27. And at this point, his disciples came, and they marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no one said, What do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and said to the men, Come, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the so, city. Let's skip to verse 34. Verse 33 and 34. Therefore the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him anything to eat? See, there they go. So y'all keep thinking that the trees of the garden and stuff you eat. And, but what? Watch, watch what you, he, he's telling you really happened in the garden. Go ahead. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish That's his work. That's all the food. Every tree they had to eat and do the will of that tree. But he said, never do the will of that one. Because they would do good with evil. So stay away from people who would tell you good things, but it end up in an evil way. You can eat from every other tree of the garden except that one right there. Why? In that one, they do good and evil because they are murderers. They are thieves. They are liars. And they come up with a good reason to do it. They're clever. They're subtle. Continue. Do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? So he's saying, you think a harvest is food and this and that. But I say unto you. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for so, harvest. But he, so he said, the field is the world. The garden is not what you thought it was. And he says, the seeds are the children of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. The tares are the children of the evil one. Mm -hmm. 
So in the garden, he placed a man. He put one of his children in the midst of the garden of the other children. <laughs> and he says, be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> my sheep know my voice. So, and so I read in Psalms 22, verse 30, right? A seed shall serve him. It shall be counted to the Lord for a generation. And so it pleased him to take that seed, bury it in the ground, and let it die. So every seed that you plant never comes out looking like itself. So he went in the ground looking like a sinner. He came out looking like a saint. Because it was, it was what's in the seed that counted, not the cover of the seed. You know, the caterpillar, when it takes off itself, it's a beautiful butterfly. Oh, yeah. yes. It no longer crawls and walks. It, t it sees things from a different perspective for the rest of his life. <laughs> it sees things from the sky and not from the ground. <laughs> so Hosea 2, verse 23. I'm about ready to close. But I got two minutes. Then I will sow her for myself in the earth. And I will have mercy on her who had not obtained mercy. And that's the bride of Christ. Go ahead. Then I will say to those who were not my people. So th those that were not my people, go ahead. You are my people. And they shall say, you are my God. Then this is the only, th this is the only place in scripture where, where God used the name that he gave Moses when Moses says, who are you? And God said, et ye, asher, et ye. A language that none of us can interpret on this earth. So they put, I am that I am. And the Lord says, and I will, sow in, I, I will sow her unto me in the earth. I will plant someone in the garden. Mm -hmm. And that word where he says, he, it said he planted the man in the garden. Man became a fruitful vine till he fell. fell. And I will have mercy upon her that had not attained mercy because she failed. Mm -hmm. And I will say to them that were not a people yeah. or not my, thou art my people. <laughs> and they shall say, et ye, as ye, et ye. And that's why Moses said to the Lord, who are you? He said, I am that I am, but I send you Jehovah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we never call him et ye, as ye, but they that sat in darkness, <laughs> light has sprang up. Ye are now the light of the world. Fulfill his, his will. What is his meat? To do the will of him that sent him. And so in closing, whew, Galatians 4. Verse 4 and 5. So when the fullness of the time has come, <laughs> that's what God did, y'all. <laughs> he sent forth his son. Go ahead. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son. He sent the last Adam. Because the parable was already, the story was written. It was time now to now take that whole story that was written from Adam to Adam. It took, it took all the way to the birth of Christ to finish the story of the first Adam. Mm. So that the story of the second Adam started at the birth of Christ. And so go ahead. Born of a woman. Born of a woman. So born, here he comes. Born here come the under, last Adam. Under the law. Under the law. To redeem those who were under the law. To redeem all of us that were clothed in death. Yes. Verse, verse 5, right? Yeah. Mm. Okay. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. And so, so Adam and Eve... Did now, they die? Go ahead. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore the second, you. Second, second Corinthians 5, verse 21. Mm -hmm. for, we, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now you can eat from the tree of the righteousness of God. 
And you can grab any fruit you want. From joy, you can go get joy. From kindness, you can go get kindness. It's a tree. They call it the fruit of kindness, the fruit of joy, the fruit of goodness. Now you can walk out anywhere in Christ. You can walk anywhere inside of Christ. He's given us all the spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Walk in the garden. Look at the stones. <laughs> Look at the trees. Eat of his fruit. And then watch you start manifesting anything that you eat. If you eat from kindness, watch how kind you become. If you eat from love, why you can love your, even your enemies. Things you cannot do today in your flesh, you can do by faith in Christ Jesus. Now to him that is able to keep us from falling, the one that can bring, present us faultless at the throne of grace, to the only wise God, our Savior, be majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. Amen, amen. and amen. amen.